Hey guys, welcome to another episode of BringSpark.com. Today I've got a guest with me who I've been looking forward to interviewing for a while, and it actually took me a little while before I even emailed him because I wasn't sure if he was going to say yes or not. Uh, I've seen a lot of his stuff before, and I also saw him on the podcast of one of our guests, which is Jordan Harbinger, who you've probably seen an interview with before. And after listening to that interview, I just went, all right, it's time. I got to get this guy on here. So I emailed him, and I was really happy that he could be here and that he said yes. Jack Donovan is the author of The Way of Men, which is an incredibly popular book. Most of my friends have read it, at least. And he's, uh, he writes a lot about masculinity and tribalism. We're going to dive into that and see what his message is and why these are topics that he's so passionate about. But before we get to that, Jack, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, no problem. All right. So before we get to the stuff that you teach and the stuff that you do, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, what's your, your origin story, if you will? <laughs> um, well, I'm uh, originally from Pennsylvania. I, I started out as a, a, you know, went to art school uh, originally, uh, which is kind of a strange thing for someone who ends up writing about masculinity, but uh, right. there you go. And, uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in New York City and uh, uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles and, uh, you know, you know, I was kind of, a, you know, one of those people, and obviously I went to art school, uh, I kind of came from a liberal uh, uh, mental background. Uh, not, I wouldn't say my parents were that way. Uh, they're just nice, normal, uh, rule-following people. But, uh, you know, I'm, you know, my uh, background was fairly liberal, and then, uh, and, you know, I kind of had rejected a lot of ideas about masculinity, uh, traditional masculinity uh, that, uh, you know, as many of my peers had. Uh, we're kind of taught that it's bad and uh, that it's outdated. That's the, I, you know, I always love it when they make masculinity about fashion. Right. Uh, but uh, they always say that it's outdated. And, uh, you know, so I kind of fell into that. And then, you know, as my, in my early 30s, I kind of uh, started reading some Jack London. I started to read uh, some, uh, you know, you know, typical men's books and so forth. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I really missed something, you know, when I was a kid. I think I really missed uh uh, something good. And I think, you know, it was something that we're losing. And, uh, so I just started thinking about that more and, and investigating it more. And, uh, and I just, uh, kind of masculinity be kind, kind of became my, uh, my problem to solve, uh, you know, uh, because, uh, it's very difficult to define. And so it was my problem to define it. Right. And, uh, so I, I spent a lot of time working on that. And, uh, and, uh, so that kind of took me to, to writing the way it meant. So, so let's start at what I assume is a question you get a lot. What is the definition of masculinity? Because I've heard tons of people try to explain it, but a lot of them seem to have trouble getting to a simple definition of it. Right. And, you know, I, I still can't do it in, uh, in one sentence. Uh, but I do think I did it well in a book. But uh, in one sentence, I don't think I could do it. I basically, um, to get close, I would say that, you know, masculinity – it has to do with you know our evolved psyche uh, that uh, that we evolved to deal with uh, survival scenarios and to deal with other men. Mm. Uh, a lot of people I think make the mistake, uh, especially a lot of evolutionary psychologists, uh, go right for the kind of uh, men impressing women kind of thing. Uh, you know, because that's what animals do. Right. You know, it's all this mating dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the th things I think was interesting about my my theory about masculinity is that I think that. Uh, with humans, in many ways, it's more about men impressing other men. Mm. Uh, because, you know, a lot of the things that we associate with masculinity uh, have to do with, you know, basic survival skills, like, uh, would you want this guy on your team? Right. Uh, and, and, you know, in, uh, you know, the thousands and thousands and thousands of years of our evolution, um, you know, we had to hunt and fight. And uh, we're looking for those qualities in each other still. Uh, you know, when you judge a man as manly, I think you're seeing, you know, he's he's courageous. And I talk about this in the book that there are kind of four tactical virtues that it breaks down into. And you know, is he is he strong or weak? Strength is always and everywhere associated with masculinity. Uh, is he courageous? Again, you know, call a man a coward anywhere in the world at any time, and it's not considered masculine. Uh, that's a human universal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, you know, is he competent? Uh, I call that mastery as a tactical virtue. And uh, finally, you know, can you trust him really? And I, 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 that's kind of my basic definition of honor. Honor gets very complicated. 
uh, as societies become more complicated and there are all kinds of different morality, you know, especially in the West, it turns to be more of like a personal honor, mm. uh, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, the basic idea of honor is like, uh, do you care about the opinion of the group that you're in? Right. Okay. I mean, so, it's your reputation as a man within that group. And right. so, you, you know, if, if you don't care about what they think of you, they can't trust you. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so why would you say that we've lost touch with this? I mean, because in our society, people are still, you know, measuring strength and, and guys are still competing and guys are still doing all this stuff. But at the same time, society doesn't look like it's, it's still searching for these values or this, these things in men as much as they might have done, you know, back when we were hunters and, and warriors. Right. Well, it's because, uh, you know, in the book, uh, I talk about an idea called the, the perimeter. And basically, uh, it's always been the job of men to defend the perimeter, to, to separate us and them, uh, to, you know, save the people inside that perimeter, you know, women and children and uh, older men, and uh, to save those people uh, from whether it be some external threat, you know, bears, or uh, you know, uh, whether it be, you know, another group of men, usually another group of men, um, you know, it's always, that's always been the role of men to do that. And uh, our, our perimeter has expanded. Uh, we've outsourced that role of men to a very small minority of men. You have your police, you have your firefighters, you have your, uh, you know, your uh, soldiers. And then the rest of us are just kind of kept inside the perimeter like women and children. Right. You know, so we don't have to, you know, and that's that's what it is to be a modern man is to not care about that job and hope that someone else does it for you. Mm. And uh, you know, and then you know, I, I actually just uh, talked to uh, uh, Tony Blower, who's a self defense expert, the other day, and we we kind of agreed that you know, a lot of people have decided that uh, protecting themselves is not even their job. You know, yeah, it's someone I, else. I have you're a just going to call them. on myself, so I can I can yeah. relate to that train of thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people don't think that they should have to even know how to protect themselves or defend themselves. They just think it's good. someone else should do it. And yes, then, uh, someone else should do it, and nobody should hurt me anyway, so why should I worry about this stuff? Right. It's kind of a fantasy environment that they live in that, that that's always going to be true. And, you know, when you outsource that, you're really outsourcing your survival. Mm. Uh, you know, when you just depend on, I mean, you become like a woman and sh like women and children in, in the old days, you know, right. like, uh, um, you know, you're, you're saying, hey, these guys are going to take care of it for me. And if they don't, I guess I die. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know, I mean, uh, that you're, you're trusting them to do that job for you. And then what's interesting is that a lot of the people believe that also have a lot of distrust for the government. <laughs> That's and I, I don't think point. those things go together. You yeah. know, like the government is corrupt. <laughs> Let's make them take care of every aspect of our life. <laughs> right. That makes <laughs> yeah. sense. I never thought about that before. But as you mentioned yeah. it, I'm going, yeah, there's, there's probably some truth to that. Yeah. Very interesting. So why is it important for men in our society to get back to this and, and to get more of this type of masculinity in their lives? Um, I think we want it. I don't think that just because the world has changed that we've changed that's much. That's the uh, it's kind of the basis of evolutionary psychology is that uh, we're still playing out the same roles that we always have, and we still want the same things. Mm. Uh, the, we're just subverting them like a lot of you know a lot of young men actually are just sitting there playing video games. Uh, in the video games, they are fighters and soldiers and hunters right. and doing the exact same thing that they've always wanted to do, um, but they're just doing it in this kind of you know, in small doses, it's fine, but, uh, you know, if it, it, a lot of them, that, that becomes their whole life, and they, in real life, they're just weak and sad, but in video games, they're really awesome, and, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't think that's really a, you know, it kind of builds a kind of false ego, I think. Right, uh, so so could people. that also be, like, the background for, you know, the, the internet trolls and the people just, you know, attacking each other in the comment sections of stuff and on forums and stuff, but in real life, they would never open their mouth and say something like that. Oh, that yes. Yeah, I mean, message? that's, that's a, that, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, they, there's so many little memes and graphics about, like, what would happen if the guy who's uh, tearing you apart actually had to talk to you in person. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, it's easy to be very, very powerful on the internet, especially when you're anonymous. You know, uh, yes. you don't have to be responsible for anything that you say. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, I have to, I mean, like when I'm writing a book, I, half the game is, is sitting there like, okay, you know, how are they going to respond to this? And how am I going to respond to that? You know, I, I have to be responsible for those words forever. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're just typing and pretending to be mad about something you don't even care about. I, I think so much of the internet, if you need any internet trolls and, and, and that kind of thing, uh, so much of it has to do with the boredom of modern society. I mean, I, I just tend to imagine, you know, because I, I used to get involved in that when I had a boring job and I'm sitting at work and, you know, I'd have, I just, back when like CNN used to have forums, I'd be arguing with people all day and a sidebar to kind of keep some some interest going in my life because I'm just filing right. papers, you know, so they, you know, they, they have this conflict that's exciting that they can just keep going throughout their day to uh, distract themselves from this boring stuff that they have to do. I just imagine like, you know, the meanest comments on the internet come from people like maybe standing in line at the DMV or like, uh, <laughs> you know, like they're sitting, at, angry they're at the sitting world. on a bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like I was so much angrier when I had to work. <laughs> I mean, like now that I'm kind of an author and a tattoo artist and I kind of have my own little world, uh, you know, it, it's actually hard to write now because I'm not angry about anything. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, I am if I really think about it, but I kind of, I, I don't have to be like when I was driving trucks and making deliveries, you know, I'm out in the world dealing with jerks all day. Right. And, uh, you know, so it just kind of ups your, your anger level I, I think, <laughs> a little bit more than, uh, you know. Fair enough. So, so how can the people who feel, you know, feel impacted by what you're saying and they go, well, you know, that's what I do. I sit in front of a video game all day or, or, you know, I need to be, I want to be more masculine. What can they do to, to kind of start getting there and, and, you know, increasing their own masculinity? Cause it, probably isn't just a, a decision you probably have to do something more about it well yeah i mean you, like, i'm going to be more muscular today right uh, i mean it's that's yeah i mean there's a lot more to it than that uh but uh uh well you know if you're doing nothing but sitting in front of the computer all day uh first thing you want to do is stop that uh and then you know you, the perfect example of like okay you're the guy who plays video games that uh, you're, you're this awesome fighter every day. How about you go out and learn some of those skills in real life and actually interact with other men? Uh, and I think that that's the key to anything. A, a lot of these guys, uh, and, you know, I, I hate that it always ends up demonizing video games. is just easy uh, just because it's 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 a vicarious form of masculinity. Uh, and, you know, it's all simulated. But, uh, you know, it's like porn, really. It's like porn for men. It, well, porn is for men. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like it's like uh, uh, fighting porn. Right. And, uh, it, you know, it, you know, the best thing is to go out and actually learn how to do those things in real life. And, and uh, instead of being the imaginary tough guy, maybe you could actually learn how to be that guy in real life. Uh, and that takes a lot of work. And it, it, it involves you dealing with men and being in uncomfortable situations because, you know, men can be really difficult to deal with. Uh, we judge each other, and that's kind of what I got my whole definition of masculinity about. You know, men will constantly judge you; they won't constantly affirm you and tell you how great you are and whatever. You know, you'll actually have to impress them. Mm. And uh, and uh, you know, through effort. And uh, you know, I think if you start hanging out with men who are better than you at things, I always try and surround myself with guys who are better than me uh, at a lot of things. Uh, and I always get criticisms. You know, people read the book and assume that I'm. Uh, I imagine myself as the, the, the God of all men, right. you know, and, uh, that's not the case at all. You know, I'm just a regular guy and I'm trying to, to, to do better. And so I associate with the men who are better than me at certain things. Mm. And, uh, I, that's what you have to do. And, you know, you don't get to be the top dog like you are at home playing video games or <laughs> writing mean comments on the internet. Right. You get to be not the top dog for a while. Uh, yeah. you know, so what about the, the judgment part? Because I know a lot of people, a lot of the, the people that I meet uh, as a coach and, uh, you know, doing my workshops are people mm-hmm. who are worried about being judged. They're scared of that. And they, you know, putting themselves in convert in, in situations where they might feel judged by others or they might feel uncomfortable. Uh, it scares the hell out of them. So for the yeah. people who, you know, they go, well, you know, I would learn martial arts, but I'm scared to death of even walking into a studio and, and seeing yeah. what they're all about. It's scary. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, so, I've never done it before. It's scary. Yeah, yeah, so how can people get past that fear? How would you help them get past the fear of, of being in those situations? Well, you're always going to be afraid of it until you do it. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 the thing. I mean, it, it, that's what we're talking about, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, like putting yourself in that uncomfortable situation, you have to be willing to do it. And uh, that's the difference between, you know, being static and not really evolving, not growing 
and the you know actually growing, mm. uh, you know uh, actually growing as a man as as a person, uh, you know getting new skills. I mean you know to get new skills you have to fail. You know you have to fail and you have to be judged and you have to suck. And uh, you know I'm learning. I have a buddy who's teaching me a, a lot of shooting stuff uh, right now, and you know. The, you know, you have people shouting directions at you, and there's guns going off, and like, uh, 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 what am I supposed to do? <laughs> right. You know, you know, and uh, you know, I, you know, I don't get to be awesome that day, you know. Uh, but uh, you know, now I know a lot more than I did, uh, you know, a lot more, uh, just in a couple days of mm. doing that, and uh, you know, like a year or two from now, you know, I would like to hopefully be fairly competent. Right. Uh, you know, uh, so but you have to you have to be willing to to fail and to you know everyone who has ever been good at anything had to do that process. Yeah. So you know, if people are worried about being judged, they need to just stop it. I you know, and the other thing is like uh, people were that way with gyms too. Um, and you know, I guess there are jerks who see someone who's out of shape or weak in a gym and are like, hoo, hoo, hoo. you know. Uh, but I know personally when I see someone. You know, especially like big fat people, like if you're in a gym, well, that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. you know, you're working on fixing the problem mm -hmm. rather than, you know, I'd rather, you know, if they, they were in a gym than sitting home eating Cheetos. You know, uh, I mean, so, I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, at, at mature people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people actually worth caring about anyway, uh, look at, you know, someone who's trying to improve themselves and saying they, they're five steps ahead of everybody who's sitting at home. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's how I look at it. So, yeah, because, because, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think I am, but there's nothing unmasculine about not being good at what you're doing, as long as you're doing right. it to learn. Yeah, if you're doing it to learn, I mean, yeah, I mean, like you're talking about, we're talking about courage. Uh, putting yourself in that uh, uncomfortable situation is courage, mm. and you know, it's the guy who's afraid to even try that you know is having less courage. Right. And you know, so. because a lot of the people that I talk to, once they you know once they start talking about being a man, it seems that a lot of people have the idea of being a man. That means that. You have to be in control of every situation you're in. You have to know what you're doing all the time. You have to look like, you know, an expert or look like a leader. But you also have to be willing to put yourself in situations where you're not in order to yeah. gain the the skills or whatever. That yeah. You need. I mean, you want to be, I think, you know, maybe it's a better way than to, to say that you have to be an expert. It might be better to say um, you have to take it seriously. You know, you have yeah. to take it seriously. I mean, there's, there's the person who's um, – really not committed who's trying to learn something who's just giggling and, and being silly and trying to, you know, but you can tell when someone's actually putting the effort in and committing and that, that, uh, you know, that's how you master a skill. And I think when you, that's a masculine way to go about handling that rather than, uh, you know, uh, you don't want to really, I'm not really trying to say anything about women here, but uh, you know, the, the kind of giggle, you know, if you just giggle and expect someone else to, handle it for you i mean that's right. men, are, men are obviously not going to respond well to that mm. so if you Absolutely. just take it seriously and uh do the best you can and not be a jerk uh uh i think that uh that's what you need need to do to learn anything that sounds perfect now let's talk a little bit about tribes and tribalism because that's a, mm -hmm. something that you don't hear too much about out in the you know the, the real world uh, so you, you already mentioned that you try to surround yourself with men that are better better than you in some areas. Mm -hmm. What more is it to the idea of tribalism and, and the concept of it? Well, I mean, an actual tribe, I mean, it, it's about identity, really. Uh, you know, uh, I, I would say that if, if you use the word we, but you don't know who your we is, you don't have one. Um, I mean, uh, you know, who is your group of people that you can defend, depend on? I mean, I think that's what you're really trying to create with a tribe. Again, you know, we're used to big systems where, oh, well, the state cares for us. <laughs> you know, the, the government cares for us. Yeah. Uh, that's our group of people. But the government actually doesn't care about anybody. It's just kind of a, a, a machine that works uh, and, and does its own thing based on, you know, whatever anybody in it is doing at a given time. But, uh, you, know, you know, humans, you know, are, are wired for these personal relationships. And a lot of people, modern people, don't have really strong personal relationships. You know, how many people, if you had a problem right now, could you call? A lot of people don't have very many at all. And, uh, you know, building a tribe is is building that group of people that you can actually depend on. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think I relate it to masculinity in terms of, like, if you don't have a peer group of men, you know, masculinity, masculinity can't survive uh, in any kind of recognizable way. 
I mean, it just, it just becomes, you know, what they, you know, just, just whatever you get biologically, you know, what, whatever you ended up with, you know, but uh, masculinity requires, I mean, courage is a skill, you know, courage is something that men have more of than women. They're, they're uh, less risk averse, but uh, that still has to be built. You know, he, you, you have more courage based on a history of success. Uh, you know, if, if you take risks and you're more comfortable taking risks, you get better at it. And uh, men are going to put you in that situation. If you don't have a peer group of men to push you, um, it's easy to just kind of not grow. Mm. And uh, so, I mean, that's how I relate it to masculinity. But, uh, I mean, tribalism is a much better, bigger concept. And I think that, um, you know, it's just important to, you know, have people you can depend on, have a network that isn't the state. Mm. Uh, you know, have, have a, you know, real close relationships with people rather than, you know, we have a world where, you know, we have friends and they're like our Facebook friends or like these people that we really, you know, couldn't depend on from any, for anything, barely know. I mean, we made it, you know, and a lot of times we invest in these relationships uh, with people all across the world who we may never, ever meet. Yeah. It's almost like you're talking to a, a virtual person. You know, I mean, uh, and we all do it. I mean, I have people who I've been communicating with for years all around the world. Sure. And a lot of them I actually have met and then they become kind of real people. But, uh, you know, I think what's most important is to build that relationship with these people around you. Mm. And uh, and I mean, personally, I think when you really get into tribe, there's, you know, people who have like really close friends, which is one thing. And then uh, tribe, I think, you know, it has to be mutually acknowledged that this is a group. And uh, that's hard uh, I mean, mine, I, I just joined a tribe actually uh, in the past year and, you know, I'm oathed into it for life. So, you know, and, you know, there are all kinds of things could happen and things could change or whatever. But, uh, you know, to those people, I have a commitment. Right. And that's established. So I know who my we is, <laughs> you know, and uh, that's that's I think what a, a tribe really is when, you, you know, you really understand who us is and who, you know, everybody else is them. Mm. So, uh, you know, for, for all the people who are sitting watching this, because I'm, I'm sure there are a few that are watching this and going, you know what, I don't have that. I don't have this kind of group around me. I have, you know, these friends that I might, you know, watch football with and these friends that I might, you know, play game, computer games with. But they're just kind of people I hang out with. There's no, there's no, you know, we don't have that type of backup, that type of commitment to each other. Right. Where can these people start? What should they do? I mean, it might be an obvious question, but what should they do to start creating these tribes around them? Well, I mean, you have to build, you know, it, it takes a lot of time, especially for men, because uh, men have to build a lot of trust, I think, to to go from, like, a guy who I'll have a drink with occasionally to someone who would bury a body for me. There, There's a lot of trust that has to be built yeah. into that, and uh, that comes from FaceTime, uh, and that that's really hard in the modern world because we're all busy, uh, our schedules keep us apart, and... Uh, you know, to make you actually have to invest in that time, and you know, people say oh, I I have a lot of friends that believe totally different things than me. I'm like, eh. you know, like could you really depend on those people? Or are they going to go to their groups of the people that believe the same things as they do? Um, and so I I tend to kind of screen people at this point. Like, is this is this someone who I'm going to invest the time in to make a real friend, or you know, is this going to be associate? I'm like, oh, okay, you're cool, like you know, whatever. But we're not going to be like uh, tight. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that you really have to, you know, find people who you really share a set of values with, um, and, you know, build from there. Right. You know, so I mean, you, you don't always need the shared values, but that it's usually a good idea because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, if you have this deep philosophical conflict, that's just kind of under the surface the whole time, eventually that's going to come out. Yeah. Um, so I think you have that body to bury. You want to know that the other guy would have done the same thing as you did in that situation. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And, you know, hopefully, you know, we're not, none of us are burying any bodies and at least until like the world collapses and then you don't even have to bury them. But, uh, (laughs) but, uh, you know, I I don't think a lot of us, you know, are going to be in that situation, but you know, you want that hypothetical, like, is this person going to go all the way for me? Right. And, uh, you know, it's hard to find that guy. So, I mean, you just have to spend a lot of time and build a lot of trust and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I take friendship seriously in that way. Mm. And, so and I think so that you've got to go out and put the effort into actually meet enough people to find the people that are your tribe. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, I mean, like I've I've had 
people that I've gotten in touch with from from uh, online stuff. Mm. I mean, and that's it, 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 as disembodied as that is. Sometimes that is a really good way to find people who actually have very similar views to you. Because sure. especially like Facebook, like if you find out very quickly, like oh that guy seems cool. Oh he posts really dumb things. <laughs> I can't deal with that. You know, uh, you know, I, I I've I've had that situation actually recently uh, where you know I, I someone was ah oh, he's cool. And then I'm like, oh, wow, really? Yeah, people's <laughs> and, online uh, lives can, can give away a lot of information about them. It's, uh, it's yeah, on yeah, that. yeah, and that's, that is useful information. You know, whereas, you know, it's like if you have people that you've been basically on the same page with for years who live within 50 miles of you, they may be the people who you want to hang out with. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I think, uh, you know, but a lot of times, too, you know, you know, you might, it might be even someone, you know, if you go to take like a martial art or something like mm-hmm. that, you know. That that might be a way to to, to find that person, um, you know, shooting stuff or, or whatever. Or, um, you know, I a lot of us, you know, are just going to be put into situations with people at work. Mm. Uh, I mean, one of my best friends in the world is just someone who I worked with in a truck like nine hours a day for years and years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we have so much FaceTime that, you know, he basically just knows what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. uh, at any time, like he can read me and see, you know, like, oh, Jack, you have to go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. I have a friend like that as well. We our yeah. our moms actually shared the same hospital room when we were born and we, we oh, okay. grew up as neighbors and then we went to school together for 10 years and we've lived together for, I think, like seven years or so. And, yeah. and uh, so, yeah, it's it's good to have those kind of people that you spend so much time with that they can practically read your mind. Yeah, absolutely. but I find that as you're saying, you know, you can also because I've met other people that I haven't spent nearly that much time with, but the the time that we had was such quality time, and we connected on so many of our our mutual values that I would trust them with my life. I would trust them with anyone's life because yeah. I just know that they would make the same calls that I would do in any given situation, and and I have that trust for them that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're looking for. Mm. So for the people who are are you know who want to get back to the masculine. Because, I mean, you were telling about your story. You were saying, you know, you started out studying art and you were really not the kind, the masculine type guy. Uh, and for people who might want to make that transition and be more masculine and learn more about, you know, these four values and, and develop them in themselves, what are some of the steps that they should be taking once they stop watching this interview? Well, like I said, go out. You know, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations around yourself with men who you think, oh, that guy's masculine. OK, well, I'll go hang out with him because uh, <laughs> and that's you're going to get that. You're taught masculinity by other men, mm-hmm. um, you know. So, I mean, you're going to learn that from other men and be in the situations. And you kind of absorb them. I, I kind of I'm like, oh, I'm doing my one friend right now. <laughs> you know, I'm basically, you know almost doing an impersonation of, of my, my one buddy. Cause in this situation he would do this. Uh, you know, you, you just kind of pick that stuff up, uh, just kind of from being around them. Um, but in your personal life, uh, you know, when you're home, uh, you know, it's like, I tend to filter my interests really hard. If I'm trying to make a change, uh, and I did this, like, uh, some people think this funny, but, uh, like for years I wouldn't listen to any music with a female vocalist. Okay. Um, just because, okay, I want to hear the voices of men. You know, right. like I want to hear what men are saying. You know, like I don't want to be inside some woman's head all the time. I want to, I want to be in some guy's head all the time. All right. And so you're uh, you know, about small habits too. Like yeah, take care of, yeah, yeah. You can. I mean, which I, I don't think I've talked about that a lot in, in podcasts. So this is good. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I made changes like that. I mean, uh, the movies you choose. Uh, you know, like all the you know the books you read, the movies you choose. Um, you know, do it with an eye to the person you want to be. Hmm. Not just for pure entertainment or whatever, but uh, you know, curate your experience. You know, curate this world around you. Uh, that's gonna you know kind of guide your change because you kind of become your environment. You know, yeah. They they say that you know you become your you know a sum of your closest friends. Right. Uh, so that's something. But you're also some of your the environment that you create around yourself. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, the music you listen to in your car on your way to work changes your day. Right. You know, to a certain degree. Uh, so, I mean, so if you're only watching romantic comedies and listening to, you know, heartbreak songs, maybe it's time to make a change into action yeah. and, and thrillers and, and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, you know, uh, 
yeah, change your world. Go watch some Clint Eastwood movies or something. <laughs> like, uh, learn to appreciate that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, learn to appreciate and understand why people think that he's a masculine man. Right. You know, exactly. like, uh, you know, what what is he doing? And that was a lot of what the process of writing The Way of Men was, uh, was looking at, like, these guys who people say are masculine, what are they doing that maybe this guy over here isn't? Mm. And if you start to look at that analytically, that's why I, how I came up with the four, the four tactical virtues. Like these are the things that these guys are always doing. You can take those virtues and look at clothes. <laughs> you know, like does this you know is this gonna you know enhance your secondary sex characteristics? Is it gonna make your shoulders look wider and your your waist look smaller, or is it gonna do the ver- the, the opposite? Right. Uh, you can do that with. The, I actually had a guy who actually is is uh, selling a course on dressing that he actually involved that in right now. Wow. Uh, Okay. Um, his name is Tanner Guzzi, I think. Uh, and, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, you can look at anything, you know, like, you know, like this character, is this, this character in a movie more masculine than this character mm. and why? And if you start thinking about it this way, that way, uh, you know, you kind of understand the choices that maybe you need to make, uh, and the changes that you need to make. Like, what am I doing? Uh, you know, like, uh. You know, obviously now I see myself on video a lot and I see myself, uh, you know, I listen to myself talk and, uh, you know, I've made changes based on that, right. uh, you know, like, oh, I, I do that thing all the time. I should not do that anymore. Mm. You know, uh, you know, I mean, you're really looking for things that come off as, as uh, overly submissive. It is a mistake. And, and I do think that it, this came up briefly earlier about men always having to be in charge. Mm. Um, that is not the way of men, actually. Uh, it, it is a. Uh, you know, we always, people always want to be the alpha or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, I always think of alpha is really just a shorthand for masculinity. Um, that in humans, it's a flexible role. There is not like this person was born the alpha and will always be. There's guys who have more of those qualities. But uh, in reality, you know, humans are very much like monkeys. And, uh, you know, there's, there's one guy this day in this situation and everybody kind of agrees that he's the guy mm-hmm. and we, we all kind of fall in line. Uh, and that's part of being a man too, is learning when you're, you know, like we said, with learning something new, learning when you're not the guy right. and uh, being able to process that situation until, instead of trying to live in this fantasy world where you always have to be in charge of everything. Of course you mm-hmm. always want to be more dominant and the best that you can be, but there's going to be situations where that is simply not the case. Right. And, uh, and you want to leave understand. your ego aside and, and yeah. Just, and just, uh, Exactly. And understanding being a man is understanding when you're not the alpha mm. uh, and, and how to operate in, in a way that's still like productive uh, when right. the, in that situation. Uh, so, I mean, right. there is submission involved in masculinity, which is like this taboo thing to say, but it's, oh, yeah. it, it makes men feel bad, like to even say it. Right. But uh, it's real. I mean, it's, it's a real men have all, men are always like, you know, what is like the army? Mm. You know, it's a whole bunch of people like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, they might come back, the guy who's saying yes sir all day might be the the biggest badass in the bar, you know, but on that day, he's saying yes sir. Yeah, and, and, uh, and I mean, and you've always this, done that. Yeah, and you see that, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've noticed this, but the, the guys who really know what they're doing, you, you know, martial artists or, or military pe- people, whatever, the people who are really safe, uh, sorry, safe and secure in themselves and know that they have the skills to handle any situation... They're not the guys, you know, making a, a you know a mess in the bar. They're the guys sitting back right. and and just not even bothering to getting get involved in any drama or or whatever because they don't they know that they don't have to. It's not, you know, necessary. Yeah, I have a buddy at uh, Tom Kyer who's a he's a uh, he teaches a lot of knife work and 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 stuff like that. And uh, you know, it, when he talked to me the first time. He lives in a far more dangerous part of the country than I do. Uh, so he's like, I don't even go to bars. Right, because I'm older, and I'm a little heavier, and so if someone messes with me, I'm gonna have to kill them, and I'll have to deal with that because <laughs> I can't, I can't, I'm not gonna get in a slug fest with a a, a, a football player. Right. So right. you know, I'm uh, I'm just gonna have to hurt him really bad, really fast, and he knows how to do that, and he's confident about that, so he just doesn't want to be in that bad situation. Absolutely. Yeah, he's just gonna relax and do his own thing. Yeah, because uh, I think yeah. that's one of the, the biggest misunderstandings that I run into when people talk about being masculine is, is what you're talking mm-hmm. about right now. It's the whole – they think that it means that you always have to be the alpha. You always have to be bigger and badder and, and you know more in command than everyone else. And they, they don't realize that sometimes it's much more you know masculine to actually sit back and just go, all right, I'm not going to get involved in this. Or, or you know you go handle this because this is your area. This is not, this is not what, when I'm yeah. supposed to step up and be in charge. 
And that's also it's a little also a little maturity too, you know, in yeah. terms of like uh, men. I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, I mean, there's that funny, there's that funny joke about the young cat, the young bull, and the old bull. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I don't think uh, I've heard of that one. Okay, um, I mean, it's it goes across the board, but it, uh, you know, so they, there's this uh, old bull and a young bull, and they're standing up on the hill. And uh, you know how young guys can be like terriers, and they have a lot, a lot of energy, and they're like, ah. and uh, so you know the young bull says to the old bull, hey, 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 let's 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 go down the hill and 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 fuck one of those cows. And uh, the old bull says, no, we're gonna walk down the hill and fuck all of those cows. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know it's like this patience uh, of right. understanding <laughs> which situation needs to happen and it's the same uh, you know it, it, it's like that Bane quote like you fight like a lot younger man with nothing held back. Right. You know it, it's it's uh, it, you know uh, an older man kind of understands like when to wait. Right. And uh, and uh, a little bit of timing and a little and not just so you know spazzy uh, as, as young guys tend to be but uh, yeah so it's a little bit of maturity too. That makes perfect sense, and that sounds like a good place to start wrapping up, too. Now, if you shared some great advice on where people should start, and I guess the next step would be to go get your book, which, I, you know, you're selling them at, through your website. Is there anywhere else they can go? To- um, it, yeah, I mean, it, uh, basically, they go through Amazon.com. Amazon. Uh, that's, that's, that's the best play. I mean, any major book chain, I think you can get them from. I mean, it depends, you know, where you are in the world. I mean, it's actually been translated into French and Portuguese. There you go. And it's coming out in German, uh, you know, sometime in 2016. Perfect. But, uh, but uh, you know, you can get it anywhere in the world. I mean, I have guys who've read it all around the world. It's just a matter of, you know, whatever story you get it from. I don't ship them from my website unless I'm doing, like, signed copies or something right. like that. So, but, uh, and, you know, it's, it's Jack e-book and, yes, yeah. web, and it's also available in audiobook, too. Which that's is perfect. Fun. A lot of yeah, people prefer yeah. that, especially people. A lot of people watch uh, stuff like this and listen to audio. Uh, sorry, podcasts. They they do like the audio books, so that's a good yeah. point. Go to uh, Amazon.com, guys, and get this book. Uh, also, check out Jack's website. We're gonna have the link under this video, so you can go check it out. Is there anything else you want to leave them with before we uh, wrap this up? Oh uh, no, I, I think we I think we covered everything they need to do. Perfect. Well, in that case, thank you very much for your time. I had fun, and I'm sure our viewers will as well. And hopefully at some point in the future, we'll find some excuse to get you back on here and uh, and do some more talking. All right. Sounds good, man. All right. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Thanks.